to the Custer Community Church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome to here. Tonight we relight the four Advent candles and recall what the good news means. Oh.
Custer Community Church, welcome to our Christmas Eve service of lessons and carols. It's a little different than how we normally do our worship service. The, the format of the liturgy is different. You're just going to get a lot of scripture readings, hearing the story of Christ's birth straight from the scriptures and singing songs to, to match each one of the readings. Tonight, we will hear again the amazing, the absurd, the scandalous story of Christmas. Though we who have heard this story so many times over the years, we sometimes forget just how scandalous it is. But the true message, the true meaning, the true miracle of Christmas is that the very same God who created the cosmos came down to dwell upon the earth. The same God, our immortal God, chose to become immortal for the sake of our salvation. So as we hear again tonight that familiar story, let us not allow our familiarity with this story to cause us to forget how truly remarkable it is. We are here tonight to worship a God whose power is revealed in Jesus' powerlessness. A God whose majesty is revealed in Jesus' humility. A God whose divinity is revealed in Jesus' humanity. Tonight, we worship the God of the star, the God of the shepherds, the God born in a state. Amen. Let us pray. Sisters and brothers in Christ, on this Christmas Eve, let it be our desire and our delight to hear again the message of the angels. And in our hearts and our minds, let us go to Bethlehem and witness these things which have come to pass and worship the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us read from the Holy Scriptures and hear once more the story of the loving purposes of God fulfilled through the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child. But first let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth, for goodwill among all people, for unity within the church which Christ came to build, and especially in this our own community. And because it would rejoice Christ's heart, let us remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lowly and the unloving, the aged and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. And lastly, let us remember before God and all those who rejoice with us on another shore, in a greater life, that vast multitude which no one could number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, who rest now from their labors, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are one forevermore. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven, in the words which Christ himself has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Thank you. 
Our first lesson comes from the prophet Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verses 2 through 7, in which the prophet Isaiah foretells the coming of the Messiah to fulfill God's promise of salvation. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. God has blessed the nation and increased their joy. The people rejoice before God as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice after a victory. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, God has shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot which has been used in battle and every garment stained with blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The faithfulness of God Almighty will accomplish this. Let us join together in singing hymn number 110, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. This is 
how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in his mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Our next hymn is number 130, Joy to the World. to our ancestors, 
to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months, and then Mary returned to her home.
20, in which angels announce the birth of Jesus to nearby shepherds who travel to Bethlehem to worship the child. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born on this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign of you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. Then suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing which has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste to Bethlehem, and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all those who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. Will you please join together in singing our next hymn, number 116, Angels We Have Heard on High. Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? 
For we observed his star and its rising. We have come to pay him honor. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from among you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I too may go pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And upon entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and gave him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now let's join together in hymn number 143, We Three Kings of the Great Law.
is a special one. It goes to the Veterans of the Cross Fund, which is used to help with financial emergencies for active and retired clergy when they find themselves unemployed, uh, a loss for housing, in medical emergencies. Uh, the funds that you give tonight will go to help those who have faithfully served the church over the years when they themselves are in need of service. Let us give as God has blessed us. Mm -hmm.
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born, not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. join together in singing the silent night, which is given number 138. We'll sing all three verses, then verse 1 again.
be upon you this night and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.